Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Aganati Madanda Sangana Gana Sadaka Chaksurin Miritam Yana Tajma Isri Gurveyama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yana Bhutare Sayam Rupa Karamayam Dharati Swa Parandikam. Our topic today is thinking power thoughts. It's easy to go around, especially nowadays, believing that the obstacle is too big. I'll never get well. That virus is going to get the best of me. We wonder, why well, I don't have any strength to get through the day? Why I can't get ahead at the office? The answer is that your thoughts are limiting you. We draw in constantly what we think about. Now, you can't think defeat and expect victory in your life. You can't draw in weakness and have the strength that you need to meet life's challenges. What we're saying is that your life is going to follow your thoughts. Instead of thinking these weak, defeated, not able to thoughts, you need to think power thoughts. This sickness is no match for me. This virus can't stop my God-given destiny. The trouble at work is not how my story ends. The forces for me are greater than those that are against me. You see what's happening here? You're planting the seed of victory in your mind. Success, breakthroughs, new levels start in your thinking. Well, true. This virus has me afraid. I'm worried about my finances. I'm stressed over my children. What that is is drawing in more negativity, making you weaker, draining your strength, your energy, your passion. You'd be amazed at what will happen if you start thinking power thoughts. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Krishna has me in the palm of his hand. He made me untouchable to the enemy. When you dwell on that, you're going to feel strength, determination, courage rising up. Now, this isn't just being positive. That is your faith being released. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Scripture says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. So ask yourself this question, are your thoughts helping you or are your thoughts hurting you? Are you thinking power thoughts, victory thoughts, well able thoughts, or are you thinking defeated? I'll never get well, I'll never accomplish my dreams, I'll never break this addiction. You're choosing in which direction your life is going to go. Pay attention to what you're dwelling on. Don't just think any willy-nilly thought that pops into your mind. If it's negative, discouraging, fearful, don't give it the time of day. Put up a no vacancy sign. Turn it around and dwell on what Krishna says about you. Thoughts whisper, nothing good's in my future. I've seen my best days. Well, the problem is if you dwell on that, you're going to miss your destiny. You need to tune out those defeated thoughts and start thinking power thoughts. Something good is going to happen to me. My future is so bright, I need sunglasses to face it. Favor is surrounding me like a shield. Goodness and mercy and righteousness are following behind me. And when you're in the tough times, the enemy, Maya, she'll work over time trying to convince you the problem's too big. You'll never get out of debt. That child will never turn around. She knows that if she can keep you defeated in your thoughts, then she can keep you defeated in your what? Life. So there's a battle taking place in everybody's mind. When thoughts tell you it's never going to change, you can't take it anymore. Instead of thinking those weak thoughts, drawing in even more weakness, turn it around. Yes, this problem is big, but I've been armed with strength for every battle. Krishna has filled me full of can-do power. What Krishna started in my life, he is going to finish. And the fact is that Krishna 
will never hand you anything that you can't handle. Ananyas chintai anto maham jayadena pashade tesam nitya yoga sema bahami aham. For those who keep me first place, Krishna says, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. That means he'll always give you strength, he'll give you the grace, he'll give you the faith for what he has sent your way. But if you're dwelling on the weak, limiting, can't do it thoughts, then you're going to feel overwhelmed, outmatched, get stuck where you are. So our message is pay attention to what's going on in your mind. In the Bhagavatam, 5th canto, 11th chapter, when the living entity's mind becomes absorbed in the sense gratification of the material world, it brings about his conditioned life and suffering within the material situation. However, when the mind becomes unattached to material enjoyment, it becomes the cause of liberation. Here's a beautiful example that Prabhupada gives. When the flame in a lamp burns the wick improperly, the lamp gets blackened. But when the lamp is filled with pure, clean ghee and burning properly, there's bright illumination. Similarly, Prabhupada says, when the mind is absorbed in material sense gratification, it causes suffering. And when it's detached from material sense gratification, it brings about Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sadhukadanai, the original brightness of Krishna consciousness. Aditi was in a situation of lamentation because her sons had been bested by their enemies. All their opulence, their beauty, their fame, even their houses had been taken away. They were exiled. All the demigods, sons of Aditi, were drowning in an ocean of sorrow and self-pity. She asked her husband, the great sage Kasapa, what she could do to help out her sons. Here's the great advice that Kashapa gave her, that every husband should give their wife advice like this and vice versa. My dear Aditi, engage in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the master of everything. Anyone can subdue their enemies. God sits within the heart of every living being, even the hearts of your enemies. And only he who is everywhere present Krishna or Vasudeva can bestow all auspicious benedictions upon everyone, for he is the spiritual master of the universe. Kasyapa continues, the Supreme Personality of God, it is very merciful to his devotees, will fulfill all of their desires, for devotional service unto him is infallible. Any other method than devotional service, Kasyapa tells Aditi, is useless. That is my opinion. What he's saying is that when you turn to the Lord, that's power thinking. After worshiping him, Krishna appeared before Aditi, rectified the whole situation. He said, I've been satisfied by your devotional service, O goddess Aditi. I must find some means to favor you for, note this, Krishna says, worship to me, never goes in vain. Well, be careful how you think. Don't get infected and miss your destiny. Oh, I can't beat this illness. I can't accomplish my dream. This being isolated doesn't work for me. I want to go to work and be in the office. It's going to ruin my business. Whatever has happened to you is not a surprise to Krishna. And I tell you, you wouldn't be facing it in the first place if Krishna hadn't put within you everything you need to handle it. In fact, he's already promised you victory. Yatra Yogeshvaro Krishna, Yatra Bija Duva Nitir Mama. Scripture says, thanks be to God who always causes his devotees to triumph. Always. Not some of the time, not most of the time, but all of the time and it may be tough now but keep the right perspective victory is out there in front of you healing is in your future abundance 
breakthroughs. Freedom is coming your way. Yes, the giants may be big, but our Krishna is bigger. The virus may be powerful, but our God is all-powerful. So we're asking you to think power thoughts, can-do thoughts, think victory thoughts. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Statistics have shown that 80% of the people are negative only 20% of the people will be positive. 80% will focus on how big the problem is, live afraid, tell you how you won't get well. Their grandmother died of the same thing. Now, if you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to go against the grain, up the stream. You can't just fit in and be scared like everybody else. Complain like all of your co-workers. Be negative like that neighbor. Krishna is looking for people who stand out. Krishna is looking for people who believe when it seems impossible. Looking for people who aren't discouraged by how big the opposition is. Don't look at how the big the problem is. Look at how big is your God. That obstacle is no match for him. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. When you believe all things are possible, so get your thoughts going in the right direction. Scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, Krishna raises up a barrier. You're not fighting that battle on your own. You have the most powerful force in the universe fighting for you, pushing back the forces of darkness, keeping that sickness from taking you out, moving the wrong people out of the way. Now you have to do your part. Guard your mind. We all know that negative news travels faster than good news. Negative news is contagious all around us. Negative news. Can I tell you, no matter how bad the economy is, no matter how bad the virus is, no matter what the analysts are saying, no matter what doomsday scenario they're predicting, you can't let all that poison stay in your spirit. Because if you keep dwelling on that, then you're going to end up afraid, worried, panicked, thinking that you're not going to make it. When you think like that, it's a negative cycle that brings in more fear, more worry, and more defeat. Do not think and be like everybody else. Manushanam sahashishu kashtid yatati sida. Don't be afraid that some plan cooked up by some politicians or businessmen behind closed doors is going to be the end of you. Only one thing you have to fear, and that is God Almighty. Mad bayad batiyatam surati. Out of fear of whom the wind blows, the tides change, the seasons shift. Fear personified runs away from him. He will keep you safe. The fearless five-year-old devotee, Prahlad, in the face of vicious assaults from his powerful father. And Prahlad said, my dear father, give up your enmity. Give up your demoniac mentality. Don't discriminate in your heart between friends and enemies. Make your mind equipoise toward everyone. Except, Prahlad says, for the uncontrolled and misguided mind, there is no enemy within this world. When you see everyone on the platform of equality, then you come to the position of worshiping the Lord perfectly. You come to the position of not having to fear the virus, not having to worry about what the economy will do, not worried about your future. Just keep honoring Krishna, and he will keep you and your family safe. Defeat your enemies. Do what medicine can't do. Turn that child around. Just don't think like the majority who are afraid, worried, negative. You have to be on the offensive and say no not fall into that trap, not going to think weak, defeated thoughts. I'm going to think power thoughts. I know Krishna's on the throne. I know him being for me is more than the whole world being against me. You can't reach your destiny by thinking negative, limiting thoughts. Now, you would think 
that because mathematical problems only have one right answer, they could not be affected by how someone thinks. George Danzig proved that even mathematics can be affected by thought patterns. During the Depression, he'd been a student of mathematics at the University of California at Berkeley. On the day of his final exam, Danzig overslept. He got to the exam late. The teacher handed Danzig a paper with eight math problems on it, and two more math problems were written in chalk on the board. He finished the eight written problems in the time allowed, but because he would got there late, he thought the two problems on the board were part of the test. So when the period came to an end, he asked the teacher if he could have an extension to finish the exam, and the teacher gave him until the weekend. He finished the eight problems in the time allotted right in the classroom, and he took the other two problems home to finish them, thinking they were part of the exam. He labored over those two problems all week and finally solved them the day before the deadline on Friday. A few days later, Danzig was awakened by a pounding on his door. He opened it up to find that his teacher was there in a state of high excitement. The teacher asked George if he had come to class late on exam day, and he said that he had. The professor explained that the exam had consisted of only the eight problems on paper, which he had solved perfectly. The two problems on the blackboard had been put up there for fun. They were classic mathematical problems that no mathematician had ever been able to solve. And the professor had explained in the beginning of the class before George arrived that these two problems had so far been insoluble but the students were welcome to play around with them. But because George was late to class that day, he never heard that those problems were considered unsolvable, and he went right ahead and solved them, because no one told him that he couldn't. With that example in mind, can I urge you to quit telling yourself what you can't do and how it's not going to work out because all that's doing is draining your strength. When you get to that problem, you're going to solve it with Krishna's grace like Danzig did. Not only that, it's going to be easier than your thought. You're going to have the strength that you didn't even know you had. Example, when your car is going uphill and it starts to strain, what happens? The automatic transmission does its job. It kicks into another gear, gives you more power when you need it, and then you coast up to the top of that hill. Similarly, for those who keep him first, by God's grace, power that you need to meet your challenges and accomplish your dreams are going to kick in when you need them and help you do what you didn't think that you could do. Now, the key is don't cancel that out with weak thinking. Every morning when you wake up, you need to get your power up, get your mind going in the right direction. This is going to be a good day. I can handle, by God's grace, anything that comes my way. He made me strong. He made me confident. He gives me his favor. I'm excited about my future. You need to get your mind set in the beginning of each day for victory. Don't just let any thoughts play around. You have to think thoughts on purpose. If you wake up and just think whatever comes to mind, like, hey, yeah, I got too many problems. I'm tired. I don't want to go to work today. Nothing good is going to happen to me today. Then you're setting your tone for the whole day. Negative thoughts are going to bring you a less than ideal day. So our encouragement is, before you check the phone, before you read your email, before you start scrolling on Facebook, before you see what the weather's like, you need to think on purpose, power thoughts, victory thoughts, abundant thoughts, can-do thoughts. And the best way to do that is start your day out by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Krishna says he will be good to those who are in tune with him. As they surrender unto me, I will reward them portionally. So the way that you get in tune with Krishna is by thinking victorious, overcoming, faith-filled thoughts. Nowhere in the scripture does Krishna indicate any lack, any shortcomings. He says, Aham sarvasya prabhava mata sarvam prabhartate. I am the source of everything. I spoke worlds into existence. I flung stars into the sky. I am everything. I am strength. I'm healing. I'm provision. I'm protection. I'm abundance. I'm favor. When Krishna said, let there be light, it came at 186,000 miles per second. Now, would you like to get into tune with Krishna? If you would, you can think those little puny, weak, defeated, get by, hope this works out thoughts. You have to think Krishna thoughts, bold thoughts, favor thoughts, abundant thoughts, healing thoughts, victory thoughts. And yes, the opposition may be bigger and stronger, but just go right ahead and agree with what Krishna says. Lord, you said that when enemies come against me, you'll cause them to lose heart and run away. Arjuna confirms this in the Bhagavad Gita. O oh Krishna, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respectful obeisances, the demons are afraid and they flee here and there. All this is rightly done. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. When the thought comes, this shut down, this virus has ruined my year financially, I guess I'll just accept it and wait it next year. No. Instead of that thought, think Krishna is my economy, Krishna is provider, Krishna is my source, and Krishna can make rivers in the desert. Krishna supplies all of my needs. Now we all know from the Bhagavad Gita that the mind can be the best friend or the worst enemy. So it behooves us to be very, very careful and diligent in what we think. We're getting a warning tonight. Our thoughts can set the limits for our life. We need to learn to think on purpose. I can do all things through Krishna. I am strong in the Lord. I have been raised up for just such a time as this. Krishna, thank you that I'm equipped, I'm empowered and anointed. Now, who told you in your life that you don't measure up? Who told you that you weren't qualified? Who told you that you've made too many mistakes and you've got nothing good to look forward to from here on in? Who told you you don't have the education, you come from the wrong family, you'll never be successful? That wasn't Krishna. Krishna is telling you to get in tune with him and then everything is possible and nothing is impossible. If you get in tune with Krishna, he'll open doors that no one can shut. He'll take you where you can't go on your own. When thoughts tell you you've been through too much, you lost that loved one, your business isn't gonna make it, that friend walked out on you, nothing good is in your future, don't believe those lies. Turn it around and say, thank you, Krishna, that you have beauty for those ashes. Thank you that what was meant for my harm, you're going to turn it to my advantage. Because when you're in tune with Krishna, he's going to pay you back for all the wrongdoings. Give you double for your trouble. So instead of thinking that you've seen your best days, Krishna, thank you in the midst of this trouble. I know that double's coming. Thank you that my latter days will be better than my former days. Bhagavad Gita says, Yam Yam Bhapishmaran Bhava Chajati Anti Yaparati Sur Yati Nati Asya Samsaya. The time of death, the mind sets the criterion for the spirit souls being carried to another type of body. The duty of all human beings, therefore, Prabhupada says, is to keep the mind always engaged in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord. When the mind is engaged in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord, the intelligence becomes full of unparalleled joy. We are sons, daughters of the Most High God. We have royalty in our blood. And we're destined to reign in life and to conquer over death. Just because somebody betrayed you, just because that was an unfair situation, just because 
You've made some mistakes. Why should you live in depression, thinking that you don't deserve to be blessed, that you only are fit for the sidelines? Why should you accept that your dreams will never come to pass? Can we encourage you? Get rid of that dead dog thinking. Nothing that's happened to you has to keep you from your destiny. No mistake you've made is too much for the mercy of Krishna. You may have had some bad breaks, gone through some failures. None of that is going to stop Krishna or God's plan for your life. Now you have to do your part and quit thinking limited, defeated, unworthy thoughts. Start making victory thoughts, abundance thoughts, favor thoughts. Put your shoulders back, hold your head up high. Remember who you are and whose you are, a child of the Most High God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It was out of faith in a God of victory that Dr. Martin Luther King preached this sermon the night before he died. And I've seen the promised land, and I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything tonight. I'm not fearing any man tonight. Why? Because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I have a dream this afternoon that the brotherhood of man will become a reality. And with this faith, I will carve out a tunnel of hope from a mountain of despair. With this faith, we will be able to achieve this new day when all of God's children, black men, white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hand and sing with the Negroes in the spiritual of old, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And can I tell you that it was Martin Luther King's faith in Krishna, not faith in himself, that proved triumphant. What really mattered was not the size of his faith, but the size of his God. Because a little faith in a great God can change the world. Faith means aligning our purposes with the purposes of Krishna. Now ask yourself, what kind of a world does Krishna want? In our hearts, we know that Krishna, the loving Father and Creator of all living beings, wants a world where we all live in peace and harmony and dignity together. He wants a world in which all lives matter. Life in any of its forms, human or animal, is an emanation from his very self. When you hurt any of God's creatures, he feels the pain. That is the kind of world that if we keep him first class, we will inherit. It is inevitable. Krishna's kingdom is the kingdom of justice and righteousness, the peaceable kingdom of love. In the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam, a description of this kingdom of God is given there. Vrindavan is the transcendental abode of the Lord, where there's no hunger, anger, or thirst. Both human beings and fierce animals live together there in transcendental friendship. Our appeal this evening is get in tune with Krishna. Krishna is saying to you tonight, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm about to pay you back for the wrongs. I'm about to open new doors, turn negative situations around. I'm about to amaze you with my goodness. I'm asking you to pay attention to what you're thinking. You are drawing in what you are constantly dwelling on. Your thoughts are running your life. So are you thinking about how you're overcome? Are you thinking weak, defeated, I can't do thoughts? Or are you thinking power thoughts? I'm well able. Krishna is fighting my battles. Amazing things are in my future. Don't be like the 80% that are negative. Stand out in the crowd. Think victory thoughts. If you do this, I believe that you're going to make it into your promised land, into the peaceable kingdom. You're going to see Krishna show out in your life. Anything that you've lost, Krishna is about to restore double the health, the finances, the dreams. They're going to come looking for you in this life and in the next life, you'll go back to home, back to God. 
If this message resonates with you, raise your arms in the air and say along with me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.